What is up you guys? Welcome to the video. I hope you're having a fantastic day. For those who are new to the channel, my name is Armon. I'm a Toronto-based Deep House and Progressive House DJ. Uh, my YouTube channel is full of videos aimed at beginner and intermediate level DJs to help you guys take your skills up to the next level. Uh, right before we get into today's video, check out this t-shirt a friend gave me. It's Bruce Lee DJing and he's playing on vinyls. Badass. <laughs> All right, back to the video. A uh, couple quick updates from me. I've got some gigs booked for April for those of you who are here in Toronto and may want to come out and hear some tunes on April 14th, the day right after my birthday. I'll be DJing at Parlor, and that's going to be a nice, intimate, uh, deep house party. It's a small club, but it's got great energy to the crowd. Really looking forward to that. Should be a rager, <laughs> seeing as it's the day after my birthday, and I'll have a lot of friends out for that. And later on, April, April 18th, I'll be playing for Secret Society Sessions from Socialite Bar in Kensington. It's a live-to-air uh, live stream on their Facebook uh, radio show slash live party. And in May, I've got a really big gig announcement, and I, I'm afraid I can't tell you guys about it just yet because the promoter has not released the event or the flyer yet. It's not yet public, but I can say I'll be playing a three-hour opening set for a really big international DJ, one of my absolute favorite DJs, so I'm really pumped to tell you guys about that, and I will let you know uh, all about the party and all about the details just as soon as it goes public. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So people ask me often, do you really need to be twisting all those knobs on the mixer being the EQ knobs? If you're brand new to DJing and you're just using the volume faders to slide the levels up and down. Uh, there is a more precise way to mix, however, of course, this comes down a bit to personal preference, um, but the EQ knobs are, of course, your three knobs that control the bass, mid-range, and treble frequencies. At least most mix mixers have three of these knobs for what's called a three-band EQ. EQ is short for equalizer. Um, if you have an Allen and Heath mixer, uh, one of the Zone series mixers, some of these ha actually have a four-band EQ, which gives you a bass two mid-range knobs, and a treble. The idea there being to give you a little bit uh, even more uh, greater control over the mid-range band of the music. Uh, so, um, nothing wrong with mixing with the volume faders, although you'll see when I do the demonstrations that you do have to watch out for the bass levels. You can't really leave both bass knobs on both tracks at 12 o'clock, which is sort of full uh, volume, because there's just gonna be too much bass and there's gonna be a spike in the level the overall output in terms of the decibels being pumped out of your mixer if you bring both volume faders um, to, to full and the bass on both of them is, is both at 12 o'clock that's going to be too much bass yes there is such a thing as too much bass guys so um, what I, I prefer to myself uh, to mix with the EQs um, you'll see of course I have to use the volume faders as well but my style is to kind of take the bass and the mid range down to zero on the new track I'm going to bring in bring the volume fader up basically to full power right away and that only really brings in the hi-hats because only the treble knob is left at 12 o'clock if the treble is too hot if it's a loud treble the uh, track with an aggressive hi-hat I may even turn down the treble knob too uh, because you don't want to have it too abrupt and have the listener hear oh all of a sudden there's a new hi-hat in this track it may sound a bit strange right uh, but typically I like to slowly open up the EQs slowly bring down the bass and mid-range EQ on the original track that's uh, running out, and then once that's done, bring the volume fader down. However, you can do a combination of all of these things, and uh, just before we get into the demonstrations, one useful tip when I find, what I, what I do is when I do use the volume fader more and leave the EQs uh, closer to their 12 o'clock positions, is when I'm starting to bring in a mix during a breakdown, uh, or in a song where there's not a lot of um, hi-hat or uh, rhythmic melody to help you keep track of the beat matching. So, um, you know, if you take down the, the bass and the mid range all the way to zero on the new track you're bringing in, you only have the hi hats to rely, rely upon as a sort of rhythmic marker for your beat matching. That can be a little bit difficult. So, what I'll do is I'll uh, leave the bass and mid range up a bit higher, maybe 12 o'clock, maybe I'll bring them to about 30 40%, but enough that I can still hear the kick of the bass in my in my headphones and that way if I'm bringing in or of course in the, in the booth monitors if I'm bringing that track in during a breakdown or the other song has something going on where there's not a lot of uh, beats I can at least have a marker 
and tell where I'm at in terms of my beat matching so I don't get the, the beat match all scrambled during the mix because I've taken out too much EQ. But um, most of the time, if you've, if you've previewed the track in your headphones, if you get the beat match uh, done right before you take the bass and mid out, you'd probably be okay. Um, one tip, of course, is to know if the beat match isn't perfect and over time it slips, you should be paying attention to which way it's slipping so that when you go to jog your uh, jog wheel on the turntable, you're not guessing which way to move it. Uh, and you can correct it more quickly and not make the mix sound worse in terms of your beat matching going off, right? Okay, but for the most part, this video is about uh, control of the EQ, control of the levels in, in terms of mixing smoothly. I find that most DJs that play Deep House and Progressive House, especially the music with lots of melodies as opposed to say techno, which is a bit more just percussive, they, t they do tend to rely on the EQs um, a, a lot, and I think that's just because they offer you a lot more control. So I'll do a demonstration of the mixing with volume faders only first, and then um, of course I will take the bass out a little bit as described, because you don't want to have too much bass in there like I said. And then after that I'll do a mix with the EQ knobs, and I'll, I'll throw up some commentary uh, through my podcast mic or through the captions to let you guys know what I'm doing and when. All right, let's go to the turntables. Good luck, practice, and enjoy. So notice all of the EQs are at 12 o'clock on both of the channels. Got track two playing now and I'm beat matching it. So now I start to very slowly bring up the fader on track two, which is playing on channel three of the mixer. And I start to take out a bit of the bass from the first track. Take out a bit of the bass on the second track too, so I don't have too much bass at once. Gotta get that uh, bass on the first track down a bit more before I can bring the volume fader up higher on the new track. Okay, now I've got it into a position where the second track is the dominant track with a higher volume level. just about slowly reducing the volume on the original track or the first track down to nothing, slowly and gently. You don't want to be too abrupt. So there you go, that mix sounds okay, but it didn't offer me a ton of control over the melodies as I brought in the new track. So here we go with the same two songs again and mixing by EQs. So beat match first with the EQs still all at 12 o'clock so you can hear it easily in your headphones. That's what I'm doing now. Once that's done, then you take the bass and mid range down to zero. Okay, see there, the hi-hat came in a little hot. You could hear it, it's pretty abrupt. So I turned it down. And I should have paid attention to that in my earphones and I could have avoided that problem. I'd paid more attention in my earphones and taken that treble down in advance of bringing up the volume fader. So from here the process is about making very small adjustments so the mix is very smooth. Small adjustments and really using your ears.
here I decide I want a little bit more of the mid-range. I want the second track to start speaking more. So you see I turned up the uh, mid-range there. And again, keep bringing the bass up on the new track and the brace bass down on the old track. So there I have the second track of the new track basically at full volume with all of the EQs at 12 o'clock and mix out the rest of that old track on the breakdown. So there you go, there's your mix.